Hey babies, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Daniela Mendez, AKA Daniela Two Spirits Mendez. And today I have the second installment of Beyond the Makeup. And I have someone extra special to introduce you guys to. She is your current Miss Gay New Jersey newcomer and she'll be giving up her crown in just a few short weeks. So stay tuned as we go beyond the makeup with Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze. Hey babies, so here I am. I told you I'd have a special guest and here she is, Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze. Hi. Welcome to the second installment of Beyond the Makeup. Now before we get started with this conversation with Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze, we are going to apply some cosmic holographic peel off mask with hydrating amethyst so basically i think what we do is we already have them open um because no tea no shade this is like our third time starting this video because we keep being interrupted we are currently at a hotel in pennsylvania because we have a show tonight out here so yeah here we go the so what this mask is supposed to do it's supposed to boost your aura and get glowing with this crystal inspired holographic peel off mask. This iridescent mask infused with amethyst hydrates and calm skin for a luminous complexion. Perfect for dry skin. It literally smells like fucking paint though. Like, if I could get this open. Mm, it smells really weird. Oh, Ooh. oh my God. You want a peel off mask? Go to Lowe's. Okay. Mm. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh my god. Ooh. We're supposed to drive dry silver, I think. Or maybe not. Which I'm gonna start using this as highlighter, honey. Look at it is it is shimmering. Honey. That works when you're done with the show, you could take it right off. I'm making a mess. You're making a mockery of this mess, honey. Okay, so these masks have to sit on for about 15 minutes. So while these masks are on, we're gonna have a little conversation with Miss Victoria. Um, so I wanna start from the very beginning. I want you to tell me about baby Victoria. Um, no, but on a serious note, your boy name is? Victor. Victor. And where were you born? Where are you from? I was born in Union City, New Jersey. Oh. I lived there until I was 10 years old. And then I moved to Elizabeth, New Jersey, where I am currently living. Okay, so you were born in Union City. Um, and you lived there until you were 10? Yes. And then you moved to Elizabeth. And, okay, so where do we start? Okay, so let's start. Oof. I know this. A little messy in here let's start with uh home life so tell us a little bit about your mom and dad like how many brothers and sisters you have what's your ethnicity i am colombian and cuban okay do you speak spanish um i do not i understand a lot bitch i understand a lot of spanish um when i travel to colombia i actually do speak it over there but the thing is, like, I'm really weird, like, when I come back from Colombia, like, I forget how to speak Spanish. Like, I'll talk to my cousins and family down there, but when I come back, I'm like, no habla espanol. Do you feel like maybe because over here you're subconscious about it more? I don't know. A little bit more, I think, um, because I've gotten judged a lot over here for not knowing how to speak Spanish. Which, I mean, I get it if you are from a Latino house and a background. You should know how to speak Spanish, but I am just, I just But don't. it's not the case for everyone, and this is a no judgment zone. Okay, so, um, you are Colombian and Cuban. Yes. Colombian and Cuban. Your mom and dad are married? Yes, Still they've together? been married <laughs> for 33 years, I believe. It's a long time. That is awesome. Um, my parents are divorced. <laughs> um, and how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one older sister. Her name is Amanda. Oh. She's only, she's four years older than me. And you have any nieces and nephews? 
Yes, she recently had her first child. His name is Jackson. Oh, Jackson. Hi, hi future Jackson. Because <laughs> he'll probably watch this in like 18 years. Um, okay, so are you close with your sister? Um, yes, um, we, I feel like I became closer with her as I've gotten older. Um, cause me growing up gay, not really Wait, knowing. wait, wait, before we get there, before we get there. So, when did you actually come out of the closet? Coming out, um, when I was in high school, I identified as bisexual. But I feel like that was me hiding the fact that I was fully gay. I think that a lot, that's that's like that's oh. like the first step always is you always come out as a bi first. A lot of people I notice have done that. Yeah. Um, I think I think the main reason why I did that was because I was scared to come out as fully gay, especially in high school. Um, so you didn't come out until high school. Pretty much. And before that, did you, so in like grammar school and stuff, did you have girlfriends, anything like that? I had one girlfriend. Um, I mean, I did have feelings for her, but it, it honestly was never sexual. And what were like, so what were like some of your interests though? Like before even getting to high school, like what, what kind of things did Victor like to do? I was pretty much like that shy kid in school. Like I just, I love to just stay home and like play video games. I kept to myself. I was like that shy, like emo kid, I guess you can say. And I stayed on like MySpace. I was all over social media. Not crazy, but like I preferred to do that than socialize in person. And then, so when you got into high school, what made you realize that you were bisexual or gay? Like what, what was that moment where it was like, okay, this is me. Like, what, what was that moment for you? It's like, I've always had thoughts about, like, at the time, like, men and stuff like that. Um, so, you're saying that you always had, like, an attraction yeah. to them, um, even before high school? Before high school. I remember the, the earliest time I thought, like, a boy was cute when I was in the second grade. Really? That's as far as I can remember. And that's, like, I knew I was, like, kind of different. And I didn't really know what to think of, of it. Like, I didn't like tell my mom or my sister, I didn't tell anybody that I thought, oh, that boy was cute. And then, so speaking of which, how did you tell them that you were, cause you said you came out as bi first. So how did you tell them? Or did well, they find out? What's the story <clears throat> with that? I didn't, see, I came out to my friends first before I came out to my family. I fully came out to my mother, even though my mother, she, she said she knew since I was three years old. Mothers somehow always <laughs> Um, I fully came out to her when I was 20 years old, um, and then I fully came out to my father when I was 21, but my mother was the one that had to tell him because I personally didn't feel comfortable having that conversation with my father yet. And why is that? It's, um, I think he would have taken it a lot harder, um, only because he was born and raised in Colombia, and he had like a strict household, and I know... They um, just have Latin men just tend to have this like machismo attitude. So yeah. I guess I, I understand that. Um, so you felt like it will it would lessen the blow if it came from your mother. Yeah, because she she's more understanding about it. Um, because she's more like modern about everything. Um, and also my grandparents from my father's side they're very religious also. But what was so okay so what was it like for you? Because you said you came out as bi in high school, and at twenty one you're already out of high school. So tell me what did anyone treat you any different at in school for being bi or um a little bit but i feel like i feel like i made more friends because i had a lot more like girlfriends than actual like boyfriends mm -hmm. not like dating wise like actual legit yeah. friends and then what when was your first sexual experience with a man i was 16 years old um I'm just gonna spill the tea. I lost my virginity inside of a movie theater. What I'm gonna movie? be. I'm just gonna be honest because this is why. Honey, we're the million filming. dollar question is, what movie was playing? <laughs> um, we actually snuck into the theater. Um, we went to see a movie before. I forgot what movie we actually like paid for and watched. And then, because at the time there was like never like security and for some reason this theater. So we just like walked upstairs, went into another theater that was like empty, but there was a movie playing. It was Disney Earth. 
ladies and gentlemen, this hold on lost her virginity <laughs> watching a Disney movie. We didn't even watch the movie. Video's over. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe. <No. laughs> um, okay, so that's interesting. Um, and who was the guy? Um, I'm not gonna not say his I'm name, not gonna say no but like where'd you him. meet him? You know what I mean? We met on my yearbook, which is now Meet Me. Um Oh, it used to be called My Yearbook? Myyearbook.com. And it's I now think Meet Me? It became Meet Me at okay. a certain Did point. Did he identify as gay or was he straight? Like what what? Well I mean he obviously wasn't straight I that don't, night, but I don't fully remember. Um I think he was like another one of those like bisexual type. Because I feel like I clicked with him more because he was also like in that emo scene and I know... And I'm assuming the movie theater was empty? Yes. There were actually people coming in later, but like we were in like this one section that was like up here. And then like there was like a wall here and then the rest of the section was like that way. These people were going the completely opposite direction. They didn't see us. We were quiet. That takes skill, honey, because I, I can't. That's too uncomfortable. And if we like saw somebody getting kind of close, like we stopped and then we were just like chilling and then we like went back into it. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. So now this is my favorite part of this. I want to know when you discovered drag. Discovering drag. Um, Not the first time you perform, but when you discover drag. Well, I've I've seen it on and off on social media. Um, I think the first ever experience was. Um, discovering who Jeffree Star was, which that was years ago on the MySpace days. I didn't fully know like what he was. I thought he was like a drag queen at first, but then he's just like him, like this androgynous human we or love alien. Star. <laughs> yes, I'm a big Jeffree Star fan. Um, and then eventually, um, I randomly found Willem on YouTube. He has like these parody music videos. Did you find funny. him before or after Drag Race? Before. Okay. And then, and then I saw Drag Race and everything. Um, Wait, so, so give me a timeline. Like, what year was this? How old were you when you discovered Jeffree Star and Willem and all that? Jeffree Star, I think I was 14 or 15 years oh, old. Oh, so that was that. Okay, that, that was, was a long, long time, time ago. Because now I'm 25. Okay. Um, so then what made you say, so you discovered it. You discovered androgyny and drag and Willem and all that stuff. What made you say... I want to do this. Like, like, what was that moment for you, and where was it? Like, how how that happen? Um, what inspired me wasn't actually a drag queen. It was actually Lady Gaga. Um, I was constantly like watching her live performances, like wherever she was, um, going on tour, and I always like I used to watch them like in the middle of the night, like with my headphones on, so nobody could hear that I'm like listening to her music because I was like really shy about um, being a fan of hers uh, back then. So I always like watched her videos, her performing, her songs live and everything um, with the backup dancers. I was like so fascinated by it, like all the dancing and the production and just like everything in general. Um, and I always thought like, oh my God, like what if I like dance like that? Or like, what if I like was a superstar, like a pop star? And like, I think it would be so cool to like have that and to have like a stage to be on just so you could like express your, like your art and everything. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so how was okay? So you're saying you 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 were inspired by Gaga, but what was the moment and where was Victoria Peaches, please, currently born? She was she was actually born off of a joke. Um, in my first job, uh, one of my coworkers and one of the managers, like one of them, kept calling me Victoria, like as a joke. And the other one kept calling me Peaches for like no absolute reason. Like I still have an accent. Like why were you just saying like Peaches randomly? And then they were both together at the same time. And then she, the manager, she was like Victoria. And then the other one said Peaches. But it was like an accident that they were. They just happened to say at the same time. I was just like, and that's how Victoria Peaches. Was I'm born. like, you know, Victoria Peaches would be a cute drag name if I ever did it. And then I like, I just kept it in the back of my head. And then the day that I first ever came out, I used that as my name. And where is the first place you performed? At Mandala, shockingly. And it was a hot disaster. Like I have old pictures of it, hot mess. And okay, so your first time performing was at Mandala as you performed Christina Aguilera. And um, how long have you been doing drag now, currently? Now, um, I believe 
three and a half years now. So that Mandala's performance was three and a half years ago. Yes. June 2015, I believe. And last, last year, I believe it was, you had a monumentous moment in your drag career. So um, tell everybody what that was. Yes, I decided to compete for Miss Gay New Jersey Newcomer um, for the year 2018, and I won. Yay! <laughs> and we are actually coming up on a year because on March 16th, 16. that's Aquila 55s, is your give up that was that is that's going to be the day where we crown the new miss gay new jersey newcomer for 2019 i will be co-hosting mm, shameless plug um <laughs> okay so are you excited about that yes um i'm excited to crown the next girl i also have a production for my give up which i'm not going to say much about it it's in the works i heard the mix it's sickening and um going back to the night you won uh, what was described to me that feeling described to me the work that it took going into that like talk about that whole experience like the night like setting everything up for that um i originally was supposed to compete in 2017 but i just wasn't ready at the time um because of personal reasons um, and i had a whole year to think about it and prepare and then i decided to compete for 2018 um of course with the help of um, one of my drag mothers, Christy Blaze, she helped me um, get the dancers for the production. She helped me with my gown. Um, big shout out to her for helping me with everything. We love you, Christy. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what your dating life is like while also being a drag queen. So do you tell guys when you meet them that you do drag or do you not because you're scared of um rejection because of the fact that you do drag so well tell me just a bit about your dating experience as being a drag queen well as a drag queen i actually don't really i feel like i don't date or try to um because i have had a lot of rejection only because of what i do on the side um but at the same time i just think a lot of people don't realize that it's, well for me it's mainly just for fun um but they think that it's like gonna be like my full-time career and that's really not the case um, but a lot of people just don't understand that and they just see like oh you want to try to be this and that they fail to understand a lot of time that the drag comes off you know it's just literally a job like you put on the makeup you perform and then it comes off and you're right. back to victor i think that also with gay men um there's like this mask for mask uh thing going on where it's like gay men want only a masculine man so the i think they associate obviously drag with femininity so they think that a, 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 a person who does drag cannot be masculine out of drag right which is totally not true but right now that your dating life is kind of non-existent right now it's non-existent um We'll just, leave it. we'll just leave it at that, honey. Right now, her dating life is non-existent, but she's single and ready to mingle. So hit her up in her DMs, okay? Um, so you're about to give up your crown. What are some of your drag goals for, when, for after your give up as Miss Gay New Jersey newcomer? For after the give up? Yeah. Um, well, I would like to venture out of New Jersey because um, I feel like there's much bigger opportunities in New York. Um, just for Jersey, I feel like the only places we're running out of gay bars in New Jersey. I feel like a lot of them are just closing. And I know the biggest bars right now are Mandala on Sundays, and then we also have Paradise and Asbury Park. Um, there, well, and also Georgie's. Um, but I know can't forget about Feathers. Feathers as well. Shout out to Feathers. That's like a home to me. Okay, so you're saying so your goal for after your give up is to just branch out of New Jersey because yes, honey, there is a bigger drag world out there. I I don't think we got to know what do you do like what's what does Victor do for a living outside of drag? Like what do, what do you do? Well, right now um, I do work in um, logistics. I'm an office manager at my job. Oh. So I work full time. Uh, that means she has a 401k, honey. <laughs> and benefits. So get in her DMs, honey. That's awesome. Well, 
We, my face is so tight. Is your face tight? I know. I'm like, oh my to god, my face is so <laughs> tight, honey. This is better than Botox. <laughs> um, so we are about to go wash these masks off and then transform to the glamazons that we are, honey. Um, to get ready for our show tonight. Yes. And we'll be back once. I think we'll come back once our makeup is on and all that. And before we leave to the venue, we'll check in with you guys. And if not, we will definitely check in when we're at the venue because this episode of Beyond the Makeup with Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze continues. See you in a second. Here we are, we're back. And we're lightly dusted. Just a light, light batter, honey. This is the Glamazon we all know as Victoria Peaches Blaze. That person before Victor, trash just kidding <laughs> garbage just kidding um okay so we are about to head to the venue which is called gun town billards or something like that it's in pennsylvania this event was put together by dj jersey aka marissa we love her we love you dj jersey um so before we head over i just have a couple questions for you number one um what inspired um your drag look how would you describe your drag look and what inspired it? I would describe it as it. I like to incorporate like Born This Way era of Gaga into it, um, but also with a like a little with the Victoria twist. Yes, there you have it. And um, I know you said Gaga is a huge inspiration for you, but in our drag scene, um, it can be locally or nationally. Who are some of your inspirations? Like drag, actual drag queens. Like what are your drag queen, who are your drag queen inspirations? My inspirations, um, my first one I'd like to say is Bella Sky, only because she is the very first drag queen that I ever saw perform at the Den Nightclub. Um, and honestly, if it wasn't for her, um, you know, giving me like a platform at the Den to continue performing and everything, like she, inspired me to keep going um and also michelle pinata she definitely helped me a lot in terms of getting ready and everything so another inspiration is also my other drag mother christy blaze you know she constantly um she's always hard on me in terms of how i look makeup what i'm wearing she's my biggest critic but it's all it's constructive criticism yes so and we need that. We don't better. want to be surrounded by yes people, honey. We want, we want someone who's going to tell us the real, real, yes, honey. I, like, if get I'm, it together. Right. If I'm busted, you need to tell me. I, you need to be honest and tell me I look crazy and busted. I don't want somebody to be lying to my face saying, oh my God, you look sickening. And then I have like a lash up here. Like, that's not how it should be. That's not the tea, honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now we actually have to pack up and head to the venue because showtime is shortly. But I want to know what words of advice or wisdom or encouragement would you offer to drag queens that are just starting out and are up and coming? What, what would you say to them? For drag queens that are up and coming, I say the biggest thing is to just be yourself um, and never be afraid to reach out to you know the more polished queens and the ones that have been um have been doing it longer to not be afraid to reach out for any help or advice from them um because i when i started out i was scared to come up to people like that i saw that oh my god like they're so like big and popular and i like didn't want to go up to them and ask them for advice or anything um and i was just also worried that if i was going to be myself i wasn't going to be accepted but I got over that. I'm always being myself, and that's the best thing that you could do. Message of the day, baby. Be yourself, because guess what? Everyone else is taken. We'll see you guys at the venue with more Victoria Peaches Blaze and some special guest cameos letting you know the real tea on this bitch right here. Okay, here we are. I'm with Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze, and she's about to hit the stage. How are you feeling? A little excited, kind of nervous. All those things Ooh. mixed in together? Yes, I'm ready though. Yes! First time here, I always get a little bit nervous for like the first time places, but fuck it. We're gonna have a good ass time, entertain these people. These people came out to see us, so that's what it's all about, having a good time. Oh, grrr. 
So we will see y'all later. I told you I'd be back with some special guests. Now, this next person I'm gonna bring on to the camera, she was your first ever Miss Gay New Jersey newcomer. And her name is Giselle Gisellian. Hi! Hi, everybody. Oh my God, Giselle, I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy you're here. Um, okay, so you guys have seen her before, just not quite this glamorous on my YouTube channel. Check back. Uh, maybe I'll put the link in the description so you can check her out Work. as a boy. Work. Um, <laughs> so you were the first Miss Gay New Jersey newcomer. Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze. That's what this video is all about today. Be where you are beyond the makeup with Victoria. Um, her give up, her, her year of reign is coming to an end. Um, so just, do you have a message for Victoria? Um, er, just give her some words of encouragement. I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna hold yeah, this. go ahead, go ahead, do your Cause, thing. Cause this is my lighting right here. Oh, look, oh, there she God, is. God. Okay, so my words of encouragement to Peaches is to always stay true to who you are. We seem to get lost in this, the craft of drag and things like that and trying to find our place and not only in the world but in our in our own community and with our peers and my my main thing for her is uh truly stay true to yourself um follow your dreams and just never know no is never an answer never give up really that's the things i've always told myself so uh yeah keep your keep your eyes to the stars honey keep reaching for them because one day you'll be there baby you'll be there you're ready on your way so keep it up it's a newcomer thing baby it's a newcomer thing so love you Bye. <laughs> there you have it. There's a special message from Miss Giselle Giselian to Victoria Peaches Blaze, and congratulations on a successful reign. Yes. Bye. Bye. I'm back with another special guest that wants to have that has a special message for Miss Victoria Peaches Blaze. This is the one, the only Michelle Pinata. Hi, Peaches. I love you so much, darling, and I'm so fucking proud of you. I was there when you started, and to see the way you've grown. It's just nothing short of amazing. You're an amazing and wonderful person. Stay true to who you are and what you do, and you will always prosper and flourish. I love you so much. I'm so proud to call you one of my children. We love you, Peaches. Oh, look, who's that in the background? President Bill. Ooh, hi. So I'm in the hotel bathroom, and I stumbled upon a special guest. She is the one, the only, DJ Jersey. Hi, DJ Jersey. Can Check I... out the merch. You can hit her up on Facebook to purchase a lovely DJ Jersey sweater. 20 bucks. 25. Cop 20, that. 30 for Cop the... hoodies. She done raised her prices like three times in the course of five minutes. Honey. <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning and I can't think straight. But DJ Jersey, the people want to know, my babies want to know, what you think about that bitch, Victoria Peaches Blaze? She got issues. No, I'm just playing. She is amazing. She's sweet. She's kind. She's good hearted. And she is one hell of a queen. And there you have it from DJ Jersey herself. Go hard. We love you, Peaches. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the second episode of Beyond the Makeup. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell so you can be up to date every time Daniela posts a new video.